G'day everybody. In this video, I'm going to teach you about critical path analysis. I'm going to teach you how to draw a precedent network for critical path analysis. We're going to look at how to conduct a forward scan and a backward scan. We're going to learn how to find the critical path. And lastly, we're going to find, learn how to find the minimum completion time for a project. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's have a look at the example from your textbook, which is example number three as we launch into this question. Your friend's birthday is tomorrow and you decide to bake a cake. Happy birthday to your friend. The individual tasks are listed here along with their completion time. Check it out. So they're going to be mixing the ingredients, heating the oven, doing all these steps. Have a look. I wonder if it's a gluten-free cake. All right, we can see here that there's some times for each of these tasks and each of the tasks have certain prerequisites. You know, obviously you can't bake the cake until you've mixed everything together and you've got to do things in a certain order, don't you? So again, going back to what I was saying at the start, we're going to learn how we can use critical path analysis to look at this problem. So critical path analysis allows us to be able to determine the minimum completion time for a overall project. Critical path analysis helps us to see which are the critical tasks which must be completed on time in order for there to be no delay to the overall project. So let's dive into this question, the birthday cake question. So we're gonna to need to firstly draw a precedence network for the project. So I'm just gonna move this up to here so that we can uh, draw this. Now, as we draw our precedence networks this time, we're gonna draw little bubbles. All right, we're gonna draw a bubble here to start. And we're gonna make this our start, okay? Now at the very start, we can see that A and B are the very first activities. So we've got A, we've got B. A takes five minutes, and B takes 12 minutes. I'm not sure if there's gonna be any dummy links, we'll wait and see. Then I can see that C happens after A and uh, so we've then got C happening after A. Let's just draw this here. Then there's C, making sure to put arrows. C happens after A and that takes two minutes. Notice that I've put the letter and then the number on the link. Now D happens after A, B and C. Hmm. And so does E. So that means that this here is going to have to link up to that there. That's B12 and then D happens. And I also notice up here that A, B and C are the prerequisites for both D and E. So that means that D and E are both gonna branch off of here. D and E, and we wanna make sure that we put our times in. E is four minutes, great. And then F, you have to cool the cake after D. So again, I'm gonna, Put a an oval here and you'll see why we put an oval soon rather than just a dot. Wait for it. Uh, so after D is F. F and that takes 15 minutes. And D, E, F and we've got G. G happens after both E and F. So we're gonna need that to come together. So I might just make that oval a little bit bigger. All right. Just because I've run out of room here, I'm going to put G going up here. And G takes seven minutes. That's fine. And that's the end or the finish. All right, excellent. So we've drawn our precedence network for the project. This here is our precedence network um, showing the flow of tasks along the way. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do part B, which is performing a forward and backward scan. Now in each of these ovals, what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide them in half. So I'm just gonna put a little line down there. All right, at this point, I'm gonna change color to green just so that it's easier for us to be able to see this. All right, we're gonna now do our forward scan, okay? Forwards means we're going to be moving from left to right. 
okay, uh, across the diagram. So from the start to the finish. All right, we firstly, to do our forward scan, we start by putting a zero there. Okay, so we've put a zero at the very start. What you wanna think of is this is like timing how long it's taking for this cake to be made, you know? Assume you start a stopwatch and your stopwatch or your, you know, your, your timer on your phone, it starts at zero seconds, doesn't it? Or zero minutes. All right, we do a forward scan. When we do a forward scan, we add how long it takes each time to complete. So going here along this link across this side here, okay, the A link, zero plus five is five. So we put a five there on the left-hand side. Remembering the left-hand box is showing us the earliest, whoops, I can't spell earliest, earliest starting time, otherwise known as EST in this lingo, earliest starting time. The left-hand side shows that. Okay, zero plus five is five, great, let's keep going. Now let's have a look at this link down here, the B link, okay? Zero plus 12 is 12, right? But here, five plus two is seven. When we're doing our forward scan, we always do the bigger number because that's um, showing that, you know, the earliest that both C and B can be finished is at 12 minutes, all right? Five plus two is seven, but because we are doing our earliest starting times, we wanna do the bigger number. So when you're going left to right, do the bigger, let's say higher number. When you're going from left to right, your forward scan. All right, here we go, let's keep going. 12 plus 40, this is easy because there's just one link. 12 plus 40 is gonna be 52. Excellent, okay, here we go. 52 plus 15, okay, is gonna be 67 minutes. But we also need to look at this link here, 12 plus four. Okay, that's gonna be 16. So it's clearly the bigger number is gonna be 67. Okay, 67 is our biggest number. 67 plus seven brings us up to 74 minutes. Great, we've done our forward scan, okay? Um, that means that it's gonna take us a minimum 74 minutes to get this finished. Now we're gonna do our backward scan. To start our backward scan, we copy the number Oh, that changed. We firstly start by writing the exact same number that we finished with, all right? 74 there, all right? So the red numbers on the right-hand side, okay, are gonna indicate the latest starting times, all right? The latest starting time, LST. The latest you can start it. This is, means the latest that you can start it without causing a delay to the overall project. Okay, so let's now, when we go backwards, all right, so when we were going left to right, we added, but when we're going from right to left on our way back, we um, take away. So we take away 74 minus seven is 67. 67 minus 15 is 52. Just get my writing a bit nicer there, 52. 67 minus four, okay. 67 minus four is 63, but we've got two links here, so we need to check both. 52 minus 40 is 12. So when we're going left to right, sorry, right to left, we do the lowest time. What I also do, 67 minus four, when we're doing our backwards scan, really the latest that E can start is actually 63 minutes. So when I'm doing a backwards scan, notice that I've put that on the line just after the bubble. What that means is it shows that for task E, it actually can start as late as 63 minutes. 63 plus four, you're still gonna get here at 67, and there's not gonna be a delay to the overall project. Right, now we're here at this bubble, 12. 12 take away two is 10, great. And then 12 take away 12, oh, here we go, it's gonna be zero, it's our lowest. But here, 10 take away five, really that one there is five. Notice how I put the five on the line. So when we're doing our latest starting times, which is our backwards scan, 
okay? Uh, red is our backward scan here. You can just do it with the same color pen that you've got. I've just shown it in colors here to help identify different things. When we're doing our backward scan here, we always do the lowest time, um, and we work from right to left, all right? Our forward scan was what we did at the start, was our green, okay? Right, we have now performed a forward and backward scan on the project. So really at this point, we've done part A and we've done part B. So what does this mean in terms of part C? Part C says, find the critical path. Okay, let's start with that. The critical path is the sequence of events that must be completed on time in order for there to be no delay to the overall project. And how you can identify the critical path is you look for the sequence of bubbles where the earliest starting time is equal to the latest starting time, where the numbers on the left and right match up. Have a look here. Uh, that's the same, that's the same, that's the same, that's the same, and that's the same. So our critical path is gonna be where those join together. It's sort of easy to see that it's gonna come this way, at this point, it's tricky. Which way does it go? Look, this time here is 2 plus 5, so that's 7 minutes. This bottom one is 12. And remember here, really the latest starting time of activity A is 5 minutes. So that's not a critical task. We'd say that these are the, this here is the critical path because 12, it's the longest route. You know, the critical path is also the longest route through a, a network diagram. So... The critical path in this case is our tasks B, D, F, and G. That is the critical path. I'm just going to move my face out of the way so that we can sort of write this. It's time to go face. Here we go. So uh, part C, critical path is like what we've identified there, B to D to F to G. That's our critical path. So there are critical tasks. The second part of that question was minimum completion time for the project. The minimum completion time for the project is what this number is in this bubble at the very end. Okay. Uh, minimum completion time in this case is 74 minutes. Oh, I don't know how I've spelled that. Minimum completion time. You know, when sometimes you just think you're spelling something and you're not. 74, and we need to make sure we write the units. 74 minutes. That's how we do a forward scan, a backward scan, how we find the critical path, and how we find the minimum completion time for the project. Let's check, have we identified what we wanted to learn in this? You know, can you draw a precedence network? We've done that. Can you conduct a forward scan and a backward scan? Remember, the forward scan, are they on the left-hand side of the bubble or the right-hand side of the bubble? That's right, the forward scan's on the left-hand side of the bubble, which makes the backward scan on the right-hand side. The critical path, do you remember how we find the critical path? Yeah, that's right. We find the critical path by looking where the bubbles are equal. And we look for the series of tasks where the earliest starting time equals the latest starting time. And lastly, how do we find the minimum completion time for a project? That's right. We look at the very last bubble, the time which is at the very end. Awesome. That's how to do forward and backward scans and critical paths.